Bloomberg Television. Congressman Daryl Issa is fuming over emails between the New York Fed and AIG, emails he obtained. They show that during the worst of the financial crisis, the New York Fed told AIG to withhold details over payments to banks, including Goldman Sachs. The head of the New York Fed at the time, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner. Issa is calling Geithner out on the matter. The congressman joins us now from Capitol Hill. Congressman, so glad to have you with us. So. Should Tim Geithner be dismissed? I mean, it, it seems, at least according to the New York Fed, that he was not withholding information. But you say if he wasn't withholding information, he's been downright incompetent. Well, this is one of the challenges we have with Tim Geithner is that he's always the guy at the center of everything, making all the good things happen until good things don't happen. And then he had nothing to do with it, wasn't a regulator, and clearly uh, uh, knew nothing about this because 60 or $70 billion of taxpayers' money does not rise to his level at the New York Fed. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just a lowly congressman, but you'd be amazed how many millions, not billions, it takes to get our attention on Capitol Hill. Uh, this was enough billion dollars that went out the door that will never return that somebody put 100% payoff on when the market price was more like 40 cents on the dollar. Uh, Congressman, I think we all understand your concerns, your outrage over that $10 billion figure, but on this particular matter, the New York Fed is telling us and the Treasury Department is telling us that uh, Tim Geithner was recused from AIG because he'd already been nominated to become Treasury Secretary. Is it really fair to go after the Treasury Secretary on this particular issue, the disclosure of uh, AIG's payments to these banks when he was technically recused, if we believe what they're telling us? Well, first, we have to more than just have an attorney come to the defense of his former client. And secondly, if not Tim Geithner, then who? Uh, quite frankly, I think the American people deserve somebody's head on a platter. I'm perfectly happy to find out that Tim Geithner was asleep at the wheel, recused himself on the same day that this happened, and that uh, Baxter at the, uh, at the New York Fed, who said it didn't rise to the level of, uh, uh, of uh, Tim Geithner, was telling the truth. I'll accept all that. Then who do we hold accountable for these lost billions and what's wrong with the system that the New York Fed can hand out your tax dollars in these quantities and not think it's particularly important to make sure it's the right amount? Is it not possible to hold other people at the New York Fed accountable? Again, if you want somebody's head on the platter, perhaps that's exactly what you need to do. But a recusal is not necessarily being asleep at the wheel, is it? Well, the problem is, is that on the exact day that he was uh, uh, he was chosen, seems to be the at the center of it all. But more importantly, between November 24th and the time that he became the secretary of the Treasury, Tim Geithner purported to be absolutely engaged in all as aspects of saving America. He didn't go to a monastery for those days. So we still have a right to know. Republicans and Democrats are calling to know what Tim Geithner knew and when he knew it, and why didn't he know that we were paying more than double the amount that was even commercially reasonable for this, uh, these uh, offsettings. So, Congressman, I mean, what's next for you? You're trying to get hold of even more emails? Is that the, the case? We want full disclosure. Uh, you know, President Obama promised us the most transparent administration uh, in history. All we're asking for, actually, is transparency of the previous administration, one that, to be honest, President Obama ran against because they were the too secretive. But as we get through it... Uh, co Congressman, I want to ask you a question about uh, what you just mentioned before, about what Tim Geithner yes, did sir. and didn't know about the payments to those banks, Goldman Sachs, Societe Generale, et cetera, concerning the credit default swaps. Our understanding was that it was the New York Fed that directed AIG to pay out 100 cents on the dollar. Is your, is your quarrel really with the Treasury Secretary not more over why he decided to pay out those counterparties at 100 cents on the dollar, in addition, I should say, to the concerns you have over disclosure and transparency? Well, Tim Geithner has never come forward and said, I paid 100 cents because that was the only right number. Anything else wouldn't have been right. Uh, it was essential and necessary, legal and prudent. Uh, to be honest, it's been rather secretive why, in fact, 
when you could have bought this paper on the market for less, some of it was traded, but more importantly, negotiations were well underway for a discounted exchange in which these parties would take a little bit of a haircut, but America would help bail them out. Uh, the price went from 40 cents to 100 cents simply because somebody at the Fed put that on a piece of paper. Uh, that ha that's a piece of accounting that needs to happen. Certainly, Barney Frank doesn't seem to be interested enough in, uh, in getting to the bottom of that. That is billions of dollars of your tax dollars. And more importantly, in the future, does the Fed have a right to pay more than mark to market, more than fair market value to something, uh, simply on the strength of their own decisions, and then keep it secretive? Okay. That's a good question that needs to be resolved going forward, because the Fed, both the New York Fed and the overall Fed, need to be held accountable. Congressman, thank you. I'm afraid we've run yes. out of time. Congressman Daryl Issa, everybody talking to us from Washington about the controversy swirling.